Hello everyone, it's me your favorite pig. And before we get into the video, I have something very, very important to talk about. I have been working with some people on this project for almost a year now. And today is the day that we're finally revealing it. And that thing is called Sad Girl Apparel. And no, I just wanna mention this is not merch. This has nothing to do directly with my channel. This is just clothes. It's just an apparel shop that is dedicated to giving you the best quality clothes with the coolest designs on it. Because we always find ourselves having trouble finding clothes with good designs that are also good quality. Because normally it's just garbage quality with good design. So please, if you guys could do me a solid, please go over to sadgirlapparel.com. And if you don't have the money to buy anything, that's completely fine. I just want you to go over there Browse around, just let me know what you think about it. And also, while you're at it, please follow sad.girlapparel on Instagram to, you know, keep updated because we have a lot of new designs that we kind of have ready to go, but we're not revealing them yet. This has just been a really long time in the making. We've been working our asses off on this, and it's really nice to finally show you guys what we got. And I just want to mention, currently, since the site just released, all of the orders are going to be pre-ordered back for like two weeks because we have a limited stock and we don't really know how much we're going to get. So do me a solid, go over there and check it out and let me know what you think. Hello, Charles. We meet again. I feel like everyone has that moment when they are kids where they see a movie and that movie sticks with them for the rest of their lives. Whether that be you just love the movie or maybe it was a movie that was so terrifying that it left a scar on your frontal lobe. Mine is the latter. There is a movie that I loved I think, as a child. I don't really know if I loved it or not, but I, I watched it so many times. And for those who are aware of this movie, you probably didn't realize how utterly dark and depressing this movie truly is. Just to give a few examples, there's countless references to suicide, constantly being lost in a dark forest, unsettling music throughout the whole movie, a photo of girls' boobies, death around every corner, and this thing. What the hell is this thing? And it's really confusing why the director went this route because this was based on a children's novel. And spoiler alert, the children's novel ain't this scary. And I just want to mention real quick, besides the terror, this movie is actually a pretty solid movie. The music is great. The animation is superb. Honestly, as a movie alone, it's pretty solid. But my main problem is that this movie is responsible for countless countless scars on children's brains, including me. I mean, look how I turned out. Oh, great. And before we start, I just want you to remember one important thing. This is rated G, ladies and gentlemen. Frozen was rated PG. This is lower in standards. So the start of the movie already sets the entire tone of being dark. Dark, scary woods, then we zoom in onto an abandoned house. Oh boy every kid's favorite. Then we're introduced to the main characters of the movie. Radio, who is voiced by John Lovitz, by the way. Lampy, Blanky, Kirby, Toaster, and Air Conditioner. They don't really have names. They're just named after what they are. So the movie follows these sentient appliances, but all of these appliances in question have been left by their master in this cabin for many years, stuck by themselves, and they await his return. Okay, that, that alone by itself is nightmare fuel. And that wasn't even supposed to be creepy. One really interesting and strange thing about this movie that makes it very creepy and unsettling is it explores mental insanity and going into madness. For example, an air conditioner who's been stuck in the wall for many, many years without anyone messing with it. If you were a sentient air conditioner, you would go mentally insane. Now, obviously for a kid's movie, why would you even explore that option or even make that a thing? It's been years, it's scrap metal time. Well, you can do what you like. We're not gonna give up hope. That's real touching, Toaster. You're gonna get me ballin' like a baby any time now. So the air conditioner is the one out of the group who has completely lost all of hope and has fallen into madness. So far into madness that they make one rude comment and he explodes. And when I say explodes... You think I don't know what's going on in here? Just cause you can move around, you think you're better than I am! I'm not an invalid! I was designed to stick in a wall! I like being stuck in this stupid wall! It's my function! He literally dies. Now, I don't know about you guys, 
But uh, children watching a movie about a sentient air conditioner going so far insane from being stuck into a wall for years that he proceeds to basically kill himself. That's pretty fucking dark. Well, he was a jerk anyway. Yeah, who cares if he died, right? He was just a jerk. What? Throughout this movie, they treat death like a joke. I mean, don't get me wrong, they are appliances, but they are sentient cartoon appliances for children. They are basically people in their eyes. Take the movie Sausage Party, for example. It's really disturbing and it's really messed up, but it's kind of okay because it's just food that it's happening to, right? It's no big deal. And that's pretty much how this movie treats itself. So after one of the first characters we were introduced to dies, they decided they're going to pull together and find the master themselves. So they go out the door and start their adventure. So after they make their way through a dark, dead, bushy area, they end up finding a pond with a bunch of musical frogs. <laughs> and this part, you know, it's happy. It's uplifting. A bunch of frogs, insects, and animals singing. Oh, happy day. No, wrong. Er wrong. So the reason this scene turns out to be extremely dark is a couple of things. So the toaster gets a bunch of squirrels who won't leave him alone because the squirrels see the reflection and they get all excited about it. So the toaster runs off and finds a lone flower. And I know you're wondering, how the hell is a flower going to be depressing? They find a way. Oh, they do. So Toaster goes up to the flower and the flower sees a reflection and thinks, oh, hey, it's another flower. So it hugs the Toaster. This is where the depressing part comes in. The flower fucking dies. The flower thought for a second that it found another flower to love. Then when the flower discovers that it was just a reflection, it dies of depression. How insanely dark and depressing is that? This is a kid's movie. Why are we exploring these deep, meaningful things about depression and suicide? What was this movie trying to tell us? Oh yeah, and that's not it. We have another death moment. I guess I'm just gonna call him. Help me! Help! They're killing me! Help! They are killing me! No, not help, they are taking me, or hey, they're hurting me. Blanky just straight up says, please help me, they are killing me. Why? Just choose a different word. That's all they had to do, was just choose a different word. So anyway, after all of that, they move on, and oh great, it's a tall, dark forest. Here we go. Just long enough to lose our minds. We'll be cannibals within a few days. I've seen it happen. And you'll be the first to go, dial face. Hey, mommy? What's a cannibal? Where where the fuck did you hear about that, Jimmy? It was a, a radio talking about um, them becoming cannibals. It's a kid's movie. It's a kid's movie. So they set up camp and Blanky being the absolute unit that he is makes himself into a tent. God damn it, that Blanky probably smells like shit. So they all go to sleep and then Toaster has a sweet little dream about the master. Oh my God! Well, that was a little bit terrifying, wasn't it? Oh, dear Lord! So not only was there a demon clown, but yet again, there is another suicide reference. A toaster in a bath. Really? Really? Why the hell did my parents let me watch this? Ah! Oh great, Blanky's dead. Man, it was a good run. Great! Now Lampy sacrificed himself to the gods to charge the battery with lightning. I just feel like I'm gonna die next at this rate. Come on, Blanky! Help! 
Oh, thank God. They're both okay. And I just want to mention, they do this a lot. They basically troll the audience so many times to let the audience believe that the main characters die. Seriously, with that reveal of the lamp making it seem like Lampy was not actually on the rolling chair? But then Kirby ends up giving into the madness. Yes, give in. Yes, give in to it. Yes. So they attempt to get across the waterfall. Once again, everyone dies. <laughs> How many times are you gonna make me think they're dead? Child me was afraid for their lives, you understand? Oh, well, thank God. They made it to another dark forest. I really hope nothing bad happens. Wow! Oh, good! They're all dying again. Tie yourself. I'm not scared. I'm not scared? Jesus, what? Why is this so morbid? This is basically, I don't feel so good, Mr. Stark type situation. Well, oh, thank God. At least they were saved by a fat guy in a monster truck. <laughs> Maybe things will finally start looking positive for them. That would be fantastic. But this movie does not like doing that. This movie does not like looking up. It's just, it keeps going down. So let me run down how utterly disturbing this scene is. So these appliances, they're sentient, correct? And they're being brought to a part store where they have plugs, fuses, and tubes all on display for everyone to see. It's like the equivalent of going into a butcher shop and seeing human fingers and penises on display. Oh yeah, and don't forget about this thing. <laughs> Yes, Mr. St. Peter's is quite an amusing fellow, isn't he? Oh, goody. So a guy comes into the store and asks for a blender motor. And what proceeds is literally just a, a torture, murder, horror scene. There you are! And they really had to top it off with the dripping fluid, didn't they? You know, basically robo blood in this situation. Every child's favorite. You never quite know what he's going to do. He's so spontaneous. You must be the new boys in town. Damn, that freaking tape machine about to make me act up. Damn, girl, shit. You might as well just hang around. Well, great. They made another suicide joke. So now the same customer ends up asking for a radio tube. And it just so happens that the main character, Radio, has a radio tube. They use a little bit more Toy Story logic and become sentient in front of the fat guy to scare the shit out of him to save the radio. So they finally end up escaping and go to the city to find their master. But it just so happens that their master is just leaving to go to said cabin that they just left to grab all of them since he is going to college and needs appliances. And to make matters worse, all of the current appliances at his apartment overheard him saying everything about grabbing the old appliances. Did you hear that? He's taking some old stuff to the door instead of us. So now the new appliances sing a bomb ass futuristic song about how much better they are than the old appliances and end up throwing them out the window into a dumpster. Then they end up getting taken to Ernie's disposal. And I know, I know what you all are thinking. This whole movie's been awful and depressing, right? There's no possible way it could get worse than that. But boy, it does. And man, is it bad. What happens in this next scene is so utterly depressing. I am so glad I did not understand the lyrics when I was a child. Oh, look, it's the sentient car. It's almost like we're in the Cars universe watching the Cars movie. Oh, oh God. Oh, it's dead. They just killed it. They just killed, oh, they're killing more. Oh, Jesus! So this scene is basically just the Holocaust for sentient cars. So while all these vehicles are just getting 
continuously massacred by this machine. Let me just read you a little bit of the lyrics of the song to get you to understand how utterly depressing this part is. I can't take this kind of pressure. I must confess one more dusty road would be just too long, worthless. I just can't seem to get started. Don't have the heart to live in the fast lane. All that has passed and gone, worthless. I once drove a surfer to the sunset. There were bikinis and buns and there were weenies. Bellini just couldn't forget, worthless. Once in an Indian nation, I took the kids on the skids where the hoppy was happy till I heard him say, you're worthless. In that last vehicle, it committed suicide. Legitimately drove itself onto the conveyor belt to kill itself. What the hell? And I just wanted to mention, I found a comment on the top of the video of this song itself, and someone summed up this song very well. So long story short, uh, basically this song is about all of these cars who never found happiness basically paralleling to humans who've never found happiness. This is literally the most depressing song I've ever heard in my life, and it doesn't stop there. So back at the apartment, Rob actually had an old TV who used to be friends with all of them. So he ends up making his own custom ad in order to convince Rob to go to Ernie's disposal. And I just wanna mention this, while the old TV is doing his old ad thing, he ends up pulling out a picture of a literal porn star a cartoon porn star with her boobies out and stars over her nips. It is only in there for a couple of frames, but this is a G-rated movie, ladies and gentlemen. G-rated and there is cartoon porn star boobies. But anyway, back to the disposal. So this big magnet guy really, really wants to kill all of them because they keep running away. So Rob, who ends up going to Ernie's disposal, ends up finding all of his old appliances. It's like my old blanket. That's my radio. Hey, Chris. Oh, all right, in the lamp. Hey, Chris. But the magnet ends up catching all of his old appliances. So he, so he gets latched onto the magnet and then gets thrown onto the conveyor belt, basically headed straight for his death. Now we got human lives in the mix. Hell yeah! So Toaster, being the only one left who can save Rob's life, he is literally inches away from dying. Chris! You wanna know how he saves Rob? You wanna know? It's pretty fucked up. There is not really any other way to describe this part. Um. He literally throws his body into the gears of the machine and you just watch this cute little baby toaster that's supposed to be a children's character get mangled and destroyed in the gears, destroyed to a pulp. And then the machine stops and he saves Rob's life. So yeah, uh, what the hell was this movie? This is just depression for children. But uh, if you wanna know what happens in the end, Rob ends up saving all of the appliances, including the toaster, and he ends up fixing the toaster back up and they live happily ever after for now. You know, honestly, after watching this, I kinda just wanna watch the sequel. Brave Little Toaster goes to To Mars? Bobby the Master's baby has been mysteriously beamed to Mars. It is up to our heroes plus a house full of new friends, a fan, a microwave calculator, a bag of cheddar flavored popcorn to reach the stars and bring him safely home. Yeah, I'm just gonna stick with this one. It still amazes me today that I was allowed to watch this when I was a kid. Uh, it makes a lot of sense why I am how I am now. This is just nightmare fuel. Uh, it's, it's teaching kids about depression and death in some weird way. And the thing is, it wouldn't matter if it was just an R-rated horror movie. Not even R-rated, but like PG-13 or something like that. But this was as low as it physically can get for children's movies. But uh, honestly, it just makes me uh, wanna make sure my car uh, stays up to date so it doesn't have to um, die like that. But thank you all for watching this video. If you so enjoyed this video, please subscribe to me. I make a lot of videos like this one. Also, please go check out sadgirlapparel.com. It's a really big project that we've been working on 
for a long ass time and it would mean the world for me just for you guys to go look. You don't even have to buy anything. If you just look at the designs, let me know what you think about them. Please, do it, do it for your old pal, pig. But I love you all. I appreciate every one of you. And I will see you in the next one.